let's talk about the first exercise. In this exercise, you will work with uh, linear regression and specifically you are going to implement the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. For this exercise, first you will need to generate 100 points, uh, 100 pairs of points. So you will generate 100 pairs of X and Y numbers. The X numbers uh, will be generated in the interval uh, 0, 1. So one way to do this, one easy way to do this is to uh, generate numbers starting from zero and increasing uh, by 0 0.01. So you will generate zero, then 0 0.01, then 0 0.02, and so on until you get uh, to the number one. So once you have generated these points, uh, you need to generate the y's for each of these points. And the y's will be generated using the sine function in this way. You will take the first number, you will multiply it by pi and by 2, and then evaluate the sine function with this number. After that, you will add some error. And this error, uh, I suggest uh, to be between minus 0.3 and uh, 0.3. So the idea is to generate 100 points, which evaluation will be very similar to sign, but not the same because we are going to add some random noise here. It is important to notice that this error should be different for each of the points. So you need to program a function that will uh, generate an error for each of the points. Now, after you have generated these points, uh, you will need to implement the stochastic gradient descent. We have it here and I'm, I'm going to explain a bit uh, about the elements in this algorithm. This is a very simple algorithm but sometimes it can be confusing the first time. So first you see here that we have a loop. This loop could be implemented simply as a for loop and you can run this uh, loop for let's say 5,000 iterations, 6,000 6, iterations, maybe 10,000. It will depend very much on your data and your specific parameters that you are using. So suppose that you run this for 5,000 times, then you get another inner loop here, a four that will go from i equals one to m, where m is the total number of points that you have. So in this exercise, you are working or you will be working with 100 points, okay? So this will go from one to 100. And uh, so just remember that the index i is an index for the number of points. Okay, now what's, uh, what's inside this, this main loop, this loop, this inner loop? We have the rule for updating the parameters. So here in the rule you have theta j will take the value of what theta j has currently plus some alpha. This alpha is a number between 0 and 1. And uh, this will be uh, multiplied by the error, some measure of error, which will be y minus uh, h of x, where here xi, this index again, is the, the index over the example. So suppose that you are first applying this to the first example, this will be x1. And this is the evaluation of the polynomial. You are going to define a polynomial for this task. So you will evaluate your polynomial using this point, And you will subtract this result from the real value for that example that you generated here. OK. So you will compute this subtraction. And then you will multiply it by this factor here. So this factor here sometimes is uh, uh, a, a bit confusing. So uh, I have written down here uh, some uh, tips to, rem to remember. For example, i is an index defined over the number of data points going from 1 to 100. 
j is an index defined over the terms of the polynomial it goes from 0 to d where d is the degree of the polynomial so um, you will work with a polynomials like in this uh, general form i'm not given uh, i'm not giving uh, the the value for d so this is another parameter that you will need to discover which is the right degree of the polynomial that is enough for fitting uh, the points that you will be generating these 100 points but um, remember that this is just a polynomial we have here in this expression uh, parameters theta 0 theta 1 theta 2 and uh, each of the parameters will be multiplied by some x in this case is x to the power of 1 here x to the power of 2 and so on until the point where you have the last term which will be theta d multiplied by x to the power of d okay and remember that here even though we don't have to write it there is some x to the power of 0 which is 1 of course so um, I was going to tell you about this factor this factor then it says uh, if you are going to update the parameter theta j then here you need to multiply by whatever factor is multiplying that parameter j in position j so this is the index over the terms so if you are updating uh, parameter theta uh, 3 for example here you will have x to the power of 3 if you were updating theta uh, 2 then this factor will be x to the power of 2 and this is what i have written here the last factor xi uh, sub index j means the factor multiplying parameter theta j in the polynomial function which in this case it will be uh, xi to the power of j okay so as i have said here um, you will net you will need to play with different degrees of the polynomial and you will uh, decide uh, yourself which is the best polynomial for your data um, uh, th there's a note that i have written here it says that the use of machine learning libraries such as scikit-learn is forbidden so in these uh, first exercises you will uh, need to implement this from scratch the idea is to uh, really understand each of the steps uh, of these uh, algorithms and later we will have time to uh, take advantage of this uh, kind of, of uh, libraries okay so for this exercise you are not allowed to uh, to use uh, these machine learning uh, libraries okay so what else we have here it says make your initial learning rate constant alpha equals 0 0.001 so this alpha is another uh, parameter that we need to learn and uh, there is no uh, formula that we can apply to determine which is the best alpha for our data so the only way uh, to do it is just by experimentation so for this uh, uh, exercise i suggest you to start trying with this value 0 0.001 and uh, train a, you will train a polynomial model and so the polynomial will have uh, this general form as i explained before what else we have here all initial uh, thetas uh, i's parameters are randomly generated in this interval uh, minus 0.5 and 0.5 so this is very important this is a very practical thing that we uh, usually do when we are training machine learning algorithms uh, these thetas are going to be updated several times so we don't want these parameters to grow exponentially so one way to try to control that is to initialize uh, to initialize the values of these parameters uh, with very small values values around zero that's why i am suggesting you here to, to start these parameters randomly 
but in this interval so they are small then we have here try different values for d d remember is the degree of the polynomial so you can uh, start maybe with a straight line so at degree one then go to degree two degree three four and five so on so you will discover what is the best degree of polynomial for your for your da data you also need to try different alphas uh, values to speed up the learning process so once you have uh, managed to make uh, the model uh, adjust to the points you can increase uh, these alphas so the updates are larger a bit larger every time and maybe you can speed up the the learning process so you will learn in less iterations the f the final uh, optimal uh, parameters of your model so this is something you also need to play with okay so uh, in terms of the report uh, the report should be uh, uploaded by april 29 so this is uh, you will have uh, one week to work on this problem you will need to upload it in the uh, machine learning model course page and you can work in pairs if you want to or you can work uh, alone but uh, no teams of, th of three or more are allowed so maximum you can work only on, uh, in pairs and of course both of them mem both members of the team should get involved in understanding and uh, coding the solution so in case i select uh, one of you and i uh, ask you you should be able to answer my questions related to your own homework okay and then here um well this is uh, what your report should contain um i think this part you you can read it uh, later now i i would like to show you uh, what uh, you should be able to to get with this exercise i'm going to to show you a, a video so this video i'm going to show you is uh, about the algorithm working uh, adjusting or fitting the points so if i start a video you will see that uh, there is this black curve that is turning uh, I, and it is trying to fit the cloud of red points initially it was this blue curve and during the first iterations of the uh, stochastic gradient descent algorithm the curve is very uh, quickly uh, adapting to the points so I'm going to go back so you can see the first the very first iterations the changes are are large so here you see uh, it very fast um, moved up here and this one was going uh, down but later on in during the iterations the changes are slow so maybe you can notice it uh, very carefully this curve is still going down but it is very uh, slow it's slowly going down so i'm going to um, move forward the video so you can see how how the, the curve uh, keeps adapting to the points okay but it is uh, doing that uh, slowly okay so this is the idea of this exercise uh, to generate a, a cloud of points like this that will be uh, very similar to a sine function then you will generate uh, a random curve you you will decide first the degree of your polynomial and uh, after that once you have given a value to d you will generate randomly the, the first uh, set of parameters and as i said uh, these parameters should be between minus 0.5 and 0.5 
if you plot that uh, random curve you will get something like this just a random curve and once you have initialized the parameters the algorithm is going to tell you how you need to update each of the parameters and as you run the algorithm you will notice that the uh, the curve starts to uh, to turn and to adapt to the points um, you will need to plot the error of the model so after every iteration you need to compute how big the the error is of this uh, model so the error is com computed simply as the sum of the square distances from each of the points to the curve to the current curve like for example if we consider the initial curve here and we take this point for example uh, we will get uh, this distance here okay you will square that uh, distance and you will sum that to the distance of the next point and then you sum that to the distance of the next point and this sum, the total sum of this uh, is going to be a measurement of the error of the model so just imagine a curve that passes exactly over each point this sum will be zero so it would mean that your model is is perfect it passes exactly over each of the points but in this case of course you will never get that uh, so you will always get a, a number different to zero but given two curves if you compute this sum of distances um, the curve that is closer to the points of course is going to have uh, the smaller error because it's going to pass closer to the points than the other curve so you will need to plot after each iteration what this error is and you should see that the error will start somewhere up here and will go down uh, until a point that is uh, it has converged so remember you won't get a zero because getting a zero would mean that your curve passes exactly over each of the points and this is not going to happen as you can see here you cannot get that kind of, of result okay so I'm going to finish this video here if you have any question please uh, you can ask me in the uh, Moodle page uh, section for questions thank you and talk to you later bye